Hello everybody, Jimmy Smith here and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Thank you for clicking by. So this is all about wine education, wine knowledge. It's really designed to immerse you in the wonderful world of wine. So a lot of my presentations are uh, structured around wine syllabus and wine qualifications and this video is no exception. So this is very much closely following the WSET level three. And this is on the SAT, the systematic approach to tasting wine, the professional approach per WSET, the Wine and Spirit Education Trust. So we are here on series four, which is quite a long winded series. It's got seven parts to it. This is part two, looking at acidity on the palate. Now, this is a free video. If you wish to follow on, uh, parts three through to seven are only available on my e-learning portal. That's over at winewithjimmy.com. You'll see that at the bottom of the slide. Lots of useful resources on that e-learning platform, including lots of short written questions, lots of multiple choice flashcards, map questions, and of course, lots of exclusive exclusive video content. So let's talk about the wonderful world of acidity in wine. So we are here looking at the second line in this first section of the palette. So this is included in your first sip if you are just limiting it to one. So this is on acidity. This is a five point scale as you can see there from low medium minus, medium, medium plus and high, and many other of the categories actually follow the same structure, such as tannin, such as body, such as flavor intensity and finish that you'll see there on your slide. So let's talk about what acidity does to your palate, first of all. Um, and of course, also what kind of acids we are talking about when we taste wine. So the main acids in wine are tartaric by far, then malic, which both of those come from the grape juice, and then also lactic, which is converted from malic acid in nearly all reds and many whites. Now, in some cases, acid is added in the winery. Unlike volatile acidity, these acids are odorless and can only be detected on the palate. So volatile acid, sometimes you can smell if the levels are slightly high in the wine. It could have anything from sort of tar, bitumen, sort of petrichor notes, all the way up to sort of, uh, you know, your vinegar, nail polish, and so on. So that's what we smell. But these ones you don't that you see on your slide, tartaric, malic, and uh, lactic acid. As I mentioned, tartaric acid is the major one. Uh, it is not one that we associate very significantly to a specific aroma or flavor, um, certainly when we come to taste it. Whereas malic acid, very much about green apple, it's what we find in green apples, and lactic acid in dairy produce, such as milk and cream, for example. So what about where we find this? So for most people, and this is very important, not everybody, but for most people, acidity is detected very much on the sides of the tongue, highlighted in yellow there, where it causes a sharp, tart, tingling sensation and makes your mouth salivate. It makes your mouth water as it tries to restore its natural acidity balance in the mouth. The more your mouth waters and the longer that it waters, the higher the level of acidity. But please do note that if you are dehydrated when tasting, your mouth will water less uh, because of the condition that you are in. Uh, I need to restress, though, <clears throat> everybody is very, very, very different. So not everybody detects acidity just on the sides. Uh, for me, personally, I get acidity actually kind of all over my palate. I am sensitive to it and like it. So it's something I often do search for in wines. And I suppose being an English winemaker, it's a good thing 
that I like high acidities. So here is your scale, as I mentioned. Now, when a wine is described as having low acidity, you know, like a Gewürztraminer or maybe even a Viognier for a white, the wines will feel broad, round and soft. The wine is not leading with its acidity. It's possibly leaving with its alcohol or its body. OK, so that is if the wine is on the lower end of the spectrum. High acidity tends to be found in wines made from grapes ripened in cooler climates and can cause these wines to be, of course, especially mouth watering. So, of course, there's things in between there as well. And it's really up to you as a taster to work your system out. But you should be, of course, calibrating to your teacher slash examiner. So you will be talking about this quite frequently and you'll be noting with the peers around you plus your tutor what they are detecting and you really do learn from that process. Uh, so lots of variety to talk about. Now if we move on talking about high acidity Many wines today are quite high in acidity. It's kind of the modern normality that we drink wines that are refreshing and have that high acidity and people have become quite attuned to them. They quite like these styles. So it's important to identify that if a wine has a high acidity, it typically has a connection with what aroma and flavour you will be finding. Now, of course, because acidity is detected on the palate, it is going to be a flavour, but you can then relate that back to the aroma on the nose. High acidity wines will typically have characteristics which are green and citric in their fruit structure because these are acidic fruits. So apple, gooseberry, pear. Uh, the others, not as much. Citric fruit, grapefruit, lemon, lime, those certainly are very distinctive. So you will very commonly find, say in a white wine, this is all about a white wine, that if you find high acidity, you will very frequently find these characteristics. Now, I'm not saying this is absolutely certain because there are Chardonnays being produced in warmer climates where acidity is added. And you'll find this peach, this melon, this pineapple, but still some high acidity. So it doesn't always work, but it's very typical, certainly if the wine has been more naturally made. A little word on acidity and sweetness as well. So when considering the acidity in a wine, there are two points to mention, and that is acidity working with sweetness and acidity working with alcohol. Let's talk about sweetness to begin with. Now, high levels of sweetness and acidity can mask each other. They can overpower each other. In a sweet wine, the acidity is, uh, if it is high, is not the single predominant feature. It's not the main center of the wine because, of course, sugar is very much important there. So its main sort of function in a sweet wine, acidity, is to balance sweetness. Therefore, the acidity in a sweet wine will appear less obvious compared to the acidity in dry, high acid wines, such as Chablis. Um, but it's very important. We know that it appears less obvious because our brain is focusing on sugar. So the acidity is not something that we really are focusing on as a centerpiece in that wine. But the effect, when you isolate it and think about it, will be the same. So yes, you've tasted determining the sweetness and you've put sweet. Then you think about the acidity. Try and push out the sugar level in your mind and all other factors. And you taste and you find that salivation, that mouth-watering note, and you go, yes, it's high acidity. And that is really important for sweet wines to have that balancing amount of acidity because sweet wines can be very flabby and oily if they don't have that balancing acidity. And then next is around alcohol. There is a, a label here of the Schweiger Vineyard Chardonnay from Spring Mountain District at a whopping 15.3%. So 
Alcohol can create a burning sensation similar to acidity. I'll cover this in more detail that we go through on the alcohol section. So again, consider the mouthwatering effect to see whether this is due to the acidity or alcohol for any particular wine, okay? Are you feeling a zesty freshness, linking it to those flavor compounds which are fresh? Is it making your mouth water? Or are you talking about more of a burn that comes through? And typically alcoholic whites will find quite a lot of body behind them as well. Okay, so that brings me to a conclusion talking about wine's acidity for the WSET Level 3 Systematic Approach to Tasting. Please do join me for the next part talking about all-important tannin, very, very much focused on red wine, but is found in other styles as well. So please do join me for that session. That session part three, along with all others that follow, will be available only on my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And of course, if you do have any comments or questions, please do get in touch. You can comment on this video below. Maybe you want to learn a bit more about acidity. You have some questions around it. Do you like acidic wines? How do you find acidity in terms of uh, matching with sweetness in sweet wines and so on? Please do get in touch. It would be great to hear from you. And if you do find yourself in the United Kingdom, come and see me at one of my businesses for a class, a glass, most likely a bottle.